Welcome to my channel. I'm Robin Clevett. I'm out on site, put the little roof on, and we're just about to take the back wall of the house out now. This is something we do all the time, and we put steel beams in, you know, the kind not for everybody wants, but I just want to talk to you a little bit about how we support the walls. Now, this one here is a relatively small beam, around about five meters long, but it's carrying the back wall of the house, which in turn is carrying the floors upstairs, the internal partitions, and the roof loads over the top. So when you add all that up, there's a fair bit of weight there and force. Now, this particular knock through is made a little bit different because we've got a bay here, which effectively breaks the masonry. And that creates a really big point load right on the middle of where we need to support. So how do we support this load? The first thing we do is we build a big partition on the inside to take up all the ends of the joists and inside that partition we've got acro props as well positioned in key areas where there's a point load over like a partition wall for example and then what we do is we insert needles what is a needle this is a needle so in our case we use a strong steel section that posts through the wall it picks up the masonry and we're going to have three needles on this to pick up this little bit of masonry here the key result with this is to make sure that the needles are in position and the new steel can be lifted without affecting the needles so when you've got all the masonry out of the way you can slot the new steel in and jobs are good and so stay tuned and see how we get on so let's just talk to you a little bit about safe installation of steels now so the needles need to be positioned crucially to support the masonry in the most efficient way. Think 45 degrees, think everywhere you put a needle, the brickwork is gonna start triangulating up at 45 degrees. That's how I work out how many needles I've got. I always put in more than I need because you only get one go at this. Now, we've got what you call a beam lifter here. This beam lifter can take the weight of the steel. All of that is worked out, but that depends on how far you have the steel on the fork. So you've got to be really careful of that. Sometimes you may need two lifters, one at either end. But anyone who's used these lifters before knows that the feet or the legs protrude further than the forks. So in this case, we've had to poke them in over the wall to get our forks close enough to the wall to raise the steel. Now, at either end, I form a stand. Now, this stand will enable me to raise the steel, put through what I call an insurance policy, and that just means that the lifter is not always the thing that's doing the work. I've worked these out through the number of fixings, the number of legs, how heavy the beam is, divided that by six points in my case, and each one of these legs is responsible for around about 70 kilos, which actually isn't that much. It's a couple of bags of cement, effectively, or a little bit more than a couple of bags of cement. So if you think about it like that, then you're on the right lines. Now, we're, as I say, we're ready to go. We've got the steel up to a position. The next thing to do is we're gonna take out enough brickwork to enable us to get it up onto the top of the stands and then slide it into the wall over the pad stones that we've cast in situ. I'm gonna show you a little bit on the inside, what we've done on the inside as well, and that should give you the whole supporting package. So here on the inside, I'll talk to you a little bit about the structure. So all of the existing joists are built into the rear wall. So effectively they are needles, and I know that a lot of people will just jack those up and use those as the needles. Now I don't like that because joists always shrink in their height. So you always find that the joists over the years have shrunk and they've left a little bit of a gap over the top where they were built in. So if you take everything out and you rely on those joists, the chances are the masonry will want to grind down and sit back on them, which is what we don't want to do effectively. That will give you a crack somewhere. So what we've got is a load bearing stud wall, which is built all the way through picking up each one of these joists, and then we've got a series of acro props in there as well. Now those acro props are positioned, for example, this one here, above here in the bedroom is a brick wall partition built off one of the joists straight over the top of the floorboards, not unusual for this period of property. And that one there is solely doing the work 
to hold that wall. So I know that that's got that wall. I've worked that wall out as a couple of tons of masonry. Also, I do actually do a calculation of everything, of how much I think everything's including what's in the loft, the furniture, every kind of loading you can imagine to come up with an idea of how I'm distributing all of that load through my stud, my acros, and my needles. So on the inside, my needles are close to the wall. On the outside, they're far enough away from my steel to slide up between the needles, but they're as close as they can physically be so the needles aren't under too much stress. So we've got to now take out the old concrete lintel above the doorway, which is here. So we will cut that in situ, we'll put some support under it, cut it in situ and remove manageable pieces. We don't want that crashing out and clattering into all of these nice props and supports. So, um, and that's it. We're gonna start cutting it out now and get their steel in. I carefully go along removing the masonry just taking it out brick by brick. And what I'm doing here is this solid nine inch wall. So I'm snapping the headers off. I'm leaving the inside skin sort of supporting the plate uh, just to expose that concrete lintel. Once I've exposed the concrete lintel, this was cast in situ, so it's really well in there. So I just cut a little bit out of the bearings. I've got it propped up on the inside and then using a small grinder just to get into it and then break away the bearing and then cut through to where the rebar is in the inside of that lintel just to get a grinder in to enable me to cut through that rebar and effectively take that concrete lintel out in two sections much more manageable than trying to get it all out in one especially with all of those props there I don't want to knock anything and then it was just a matter of lifting and sliding in the steel well that's it the steel is fitted all we're doing now is we're packing, we're fixing all of the bricks in above to make sure it's really well held. That's a combination of slating, some concrete blocks cut down, and then a really nice pointing mix. But it's key here that you make sure you get it fully supported. So we've done an area, we've let that go off. I'll remove this needle here now, fix that section. Tomorrow, take that needle out, fix that section. So I like to release all of my props over a couple of days. There's plenty of other work for us to get on with here whilst we let that do it. And that's pretty much it. That's how I like to fit a steel beam.